<laughs> and miso soup. And I feel like seaweed just keeps itching out of my teeth every 20 minutes. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's your fairy godmother Mint, and today we're going to talk about keeping the fae at bay or setting boundaries for the fae in your home or in your realm in general. I wanted to make this video because last week's video was really fun to do and I enjoyed it and I got a lot of really interesting comments and a lot of really awesome stories you guys were telling me about your experiences that I love and also a lot of people were saying you know to set boundaries oh my gosh the fae aren't allowed in my bedroom blah 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 which I totally understand and yes that is so true you definitely have to set boundaries with the fae when it comes to me personally the mint my boundaries are very clear with them uh, I've been working with them since I was a child and we have a very particular relationship that is personal to me and the Fae. It is very particular. Uh, they're not allowed to uh, encounter my son or my husband, um, but with me and my cats, we are open because that is how we uh, have created our relationship. That's how it is. And it's not one of those kind of like symbiotic relationships like <laughs> like they're like draining my life or energy or anything like that i'm not like allowing them to take control of me or anything like that it's not that kind of situation it's just we have a very particular relationship for a very particular reason and that's why they are allowed to approach me while i'm sleeping they are allowed to come into my bedroom um you know to talk to or to um communicate somehow with me personally and um they're allowed to pop up whenever they want for me, like for me in particular. And this was something that I asked for a very long time ago. In my teens, I think we, we made this agreement. And it has never been an issue for me. I've never felt like I was in danger. Um, I've had a, a few like, <gasps> you know, some of those things, some of little frightening moments, but nothing ever to the point where I felt actually scared or frightened for myself, my safety, my life, anything like that, not at all, at all ever. <laughs> and I have seen the little, the um, the little furry tufty guy. I've seen him a couple of a couple more times, and uh, I'm he's new. He's definitely new, and he's definitely like feeling out who I am because he's really shy and sounds so hilarious to be talking about him like <laughs> like. <laughs> Like he's a new pet in my home. He's made his presence known, you know, as a very shy and um, kind of sweet little guy. So I'm interested in, in figuring out what his role is here um, because it seemed like he was being shown the ropes, so to speak. So we'll see, we'll see. Another thing in my particular situation, my particular type of contract, so to speak, um, I do have free will to speak about them to a point. Um, anything that goes on between us that's personal is mine. Just like anything that goes on between you and whoever you work with is yours. You don't have to tell anybody anything, but I do have, um, I do have permission to say a certain amount of things and so I will because education and understanding about the Fey realm is important. It's important to me, it's important to them, it's important that people who are aware of them know how to interact with them and know how to respect them. So. But ching ching. Anyway, so I did want to I did want to talk about this because yeah, um, people were making such great points in those comments about uh, keeping boundaries set, and, and at that it's really important to keep those boundaries set because, like I said, they will pop up sometimes, you know, anywhere, and need you to do or say or perform something in particular, and uh, you may not want them to be in that space right now. You know what I mean? Like you could be on the toilet having a leisurely poo. And they're just like, hey, can you, um, can you mow your freaking lawn or, you know, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> stuff like that. And yeah, the things that they tell, that we talk about, the things that uh, I'm asked to do are mostly just like, hey, there's a bunch of trash down by the park and it's gross. Could you clean it up? Or, hey, you know, um, you've been driving too much this week. Uh, try to do more walking and, and stop, blah, blah, blah. Always like environmental things, always like health things with the animals or animals outside or, or anything that's going on in my area that I can control or speak on or donate to or help out with that is that was what my role is and in turn I you know I get other things so <laughs> that is my personal relationship with the Faye while I'm doing this actually you guys I got a package from Little Willow Apothecary I want to open it up right now because I went to open it the other day and then I got busy I'm so busy like 
you know, life is so busy. Uh, oh, oh, it's so cute. Look. Oh, this is so cute. I love how it's all green. Look at these beautiful, <gasps> look at that business card. I'll flip it. How cute is that? I've never, ooh, root sage body butter. Mm-hmm. I love a body butter. I am a dry husk. Ooh. It's a really light, super, super light natural scent, which I love because I cannot stand, yeah, you know, I, I say this all the time. I'm a migraine haver, and if things smell too much, I can't, it just can't be near me. Oh my god, it's barely, it's like, it's not scented. It's not like, it doesn't have like a perfumey smell at all. It's just a very natural sort of balm scent. It feels great. Hello? Ooh, I just rubbed it into my arm, and it feels so lovely, and it's heaped full to the top. Wow, oh, this is gorgeous. I can't even, like, talk about anything else. I'm so excited to have opened this up. So, what else? I think I got elderberry, elderberry elixir as well. Um, I love elderberry. I take it a lot, especially during the transitional periods, like, you know, um, when seasons are changing, because that's the time when, um, you get a little wild and, like, stop wearing jackets when you should still be wearing a jacket. Should I taste it? <laughs> you know, in between times when you get colds, I'm gonna taste it right now. Oh my gosh, I have to. I just must. Because, ah, uh, elderberry is, I love it. It's, it's like, super rich raisin. That's nice. Fully expected to be like, <laughs> I could drink this, but I will not because that's not what it's for. It's awesome to help fight colds, flus, anything that's coming in. I love it. Little Willow Apothecary, you guys. I, I'm i super hyped on this. I'm gonna put this in my tea every morning to keep the nasties at bay. Oh, there's something else in here. This is what's full of lavender. I love that. Mm. Ooh. Mm. It smells so nice. I, I'm awful when it comes to like goo products, like lotions and like balms. I just buy them up. I love them so much. And I use them a lot. I do use a lot of like lotion and lip balm and stuff. And I put um, like natural balms I put on Willie's nose because she gets a little crusty nose because she's always sniffing and snorting. Mmm, this is smooth as butter. Oh man, I love it. Oh, mm, yeah. I'm not going to eat it. It tastes good though. Mmm. Very light lavender fragrance very smooth buttery lip balm i love it i just want to wipe it all over my body right now it's so nice and i'm super highly sensitive to scents like really sensitive to strong smells i can't stand anything from body bath and body works get it away from me um you know any of the perfumes sort of blah, blah blah like get it away from me i'm a natural scent person all day so this is so nice in that cute little package for your birthday look at that so cute. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead. I meant to be talking about stuff while I was opening that, but I could not because I was just like, oh, bodies and bombs. Bubbles and bloods and bubbles and butts. <laughs> if anybody knows that freaking quote, we're best friends. Bloods and bubbles and butts. It was bloods and bubbles and butts. If anyone knows that, I swear it means. If, if, please, in the comments, if you know where that quote is from, one of my favorite movies that I used to watch with my mom and it was just like it's just so nostalgic and anyway setting we're setting boundaries with the Fay right now <laughs> so first things first if you don't want the Fay to be in your home or in your realm if you just want to like admire them from afar and not actually work with them or you know have a partnership with them then don't invite them simple don't invite them the Fae, or some of them, are very much like vampires, okay? <laughs> they cannot come into your life or realm unless you invite them. They're not going to come into your house unless you invite them, so don't. Don't leave out offerings for them. Don't, you know, make a little space for them in your house or anything like that. That's inviting them. And remember that they are very different. They think very differently than we do. So if you do have a space for them in your home, that's an invitation. If you have a space for them in your garden, that's an invitation. So if you don't want them to be in your visual thing, your your globe, your, your bubble, don't invite them. Number two, say it out loud, okay? 
Say it out loud. Just kidding. Say it. <laughs> Twilight Renaissance, am I right? You have to say it out loud. State your intention out loud. I do not invite any entity in here, into my space, into my life. Nothing is allowed to come in or I do not invite the Fae into my home, into my space, into my life. They are not invited. I don't want anything to do with them. Boom. If you do, you know, state specifically, be so specific, okay? Think about it like, what is it? The genie in the lamp, all right? You have to say exactly what you want. The monkey's paw, right? That's what the monkey's paw. There's a little crinkly, I'm thinking of the symptoms. The symptoms? <laughs> Not the symptoms. The Simpsons. <laughs> Where they had the monkey's paw and you make a wish and it would go <laughs> like that. Okay, but seriously, think of it that way. You have to be very specific with what you say to the Fae because not as if that they're dumb or anything because they are and not all of them but some of them are very mischievous and trickstery and they will find a loophole in your speech in what you're saying um and it's almost an invitation to find a loophole when you're saying things like incorrectly if you're not stating your intention you know firmly and with the correct um terms then you're kind of like you're kind of like playing it's kind of like a joke you know you're like making a funny joke like oh are you really do you really mean this or do you mean this you know what I mean so just be very particular with the words that you choose when you are stating your intentions number three use protection you can wear an amulet or some sort of protective jewelry on yourself on your person and also hang these things outside of your door there are many things that you can use for protection you can charge a piece of jewelry for protection and just be very specific with what you're charging it for this is protection from all things including the fae remember that you have to be so particular when you're dealing with them so talk about what you're protected from as you use this protective talisman say like all of the fae and every entity that falls within that realm like make sure you're being very specific there are lots of different things that you can use for protection um church bells are a really huge one when it comes to the fae uh there's a lot of different like mythologies about why church bells or any kind of like religious symbols um thwart them because as religion sort of like um, took their their worshipers or not their worshipers but took their their people people that revered them and respected them you know had a very particular sort of relationship with them religion kind of like took that away from them it's kind of like a hammer that smashes down on things like this is wrong now like you're not allowed to be pagan anymore you have to be a Christian or we will kill you you know so that's something that's like you know it's, it's shocking and they don't like that they don't like seeing any kind of religious symbols because it makes them feel like you know, it makes them uncomfortable, you know, it makes them uncomfortable to see. And I mean, imagine if you went to somebody's house and they had some sort of like, say you're a huge animal lover and you go into someone's house and they've got like animal heads all over the wall and you just feel uncomfortable because this is something that you're against. It's something that makes you feel like, um, threatened, you know, something that makes you feel threatened. So you don't want to be in there. So think of it like that. It's one of those things that makes them feel like, uh, okay, no, this person um, would probably kill me. So I'm just gonna not even bother with them. Like holy water, church bells, crosses. If you do have crosses, if you're someone who just likes to uh, have that symbol in your home and you do invite the Fae in, just remember that it's going to make them feel weird uh, if you want to invite them in. So just be careful about that. It's not that they won't go into that space with those types of things. It just, it makes them very uncomfortable. Um, so they won't go in unless you invite them in. Iron, of course, is another thing that a particular fae dislike. An iron horseshoe was traditionally used to keep any negative uh, entities out. Put it on the front of your door and it keeps anything negative out and brings the good luck in. So an iron horseshoe is great. Iron in general, like I said. Psh. Some people also use steel. They say that steel keeps the fae at bay and they still can like encounter you, but they won't like touch you or or harm you or anything like that and you can see through the glamour if you're wearing iron or steel so that's also a good thing and like the number one thing which I find super interesting is bread like you know stale bread or or just like bread in general um, it is one of those things that it, it's like an innovative kind of thing bread um, and the Fae don't really like technology it, 
And you would think like, you know, that they would love bread, you know, because it's often, it's often given as an offering to the Fae. Bread and cream, like fresh bread and cream and just like freshly baked bread products are often given to the Fae as a gift or as an offering. But to some of the Fae, bread is a sign of innovation, it's a sign of domestication. You know, this, this bread that is made from different types of tools and stuff like that, they're just like, mm, I'm not okay with that. Decide whether you want to use bread or not as a, a, a means to keep the Fae at bay. I've always used like protective symbols to be worn or to be hung around the house in areas that they weren't allowed to go in. And last but not least, St. John's Wort. The herb, St. John's Wort. It's a very mind stabilizing herb um, and it also helps to calm the mind and to kind of shut you off from a lot of different uh, ways of thinking. And not in a negative way, but in a way that helps you to focus and to uh, be able to work on like the task at hand. And it kind of takes away from that fantasy, that um, extra sight that you may have um, naturally. So it's one of those things that kind of like separates the, the magic world from the mundane world, so to speak. But for someone to cut off that part of themselves or for an herb to represent the, the separation of magic from mundane, it's kind of scary, you know, it's something that uh, erases you. It's kind of like an eraser herb and that's terrifying. Nobody wants to be erased, nobody wants to be forgotten, you know what I mean? Um, so St. John's Wort is often used to um, keep the fey away from you. You can drink it in a tea to protect yourself from them. Scatter it outside in front of your home, around your home, inside the home. Again, one of the things that I love to do with any kind of herbs that I want to be like um, imbued in my home is I'll scatter them all over the rug, let them sit for a while and then vacuum them up. That's one of my favorite ways to use herbs like in the home for protection and something like that. Otherwise, like my number one is always just say it. Say what you want and what you don't want. Say it out loud and with conviction. Be careful of the words that you're using. Be very particular with the words that you're using. And that's it. I do not want you here. No thank you. You know? Peace out. <laughs> Booyah. You know? So if you are learning about them, just studying them in general, but you don't want to work with them, state it. State that you do not want to work with them and that your studying and research is just for like academic purposes only. It is not an invitation for them to come into your house and be like, hi, can I get something to eat? What's going on? How you doing today? You know what I mean? Just be, just be very, very particular and precise. And that's it. Simple. I hope that everybody enjoyed that last video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And my next video, like I said, we're going to be doing some cooking with fire element soup. I'm super excited for that. I also have another video. I have a very glamour video coming up. Um, um, I think it's next week. I think it's next week. Yeah. I teamed up with Medusa's makeup and I did a wonderful video about fairy glamour, how you can use glamours in magic and how to see through a glamour on someone else. All right, my loves have a beautiful magical evening. Mm -hmm.